Hello, ham radio operators and electronics enthusiasts the world around. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and this is the Ask Dave channel. This time, instead of answering a specific question, we're going to review a small receive-only loop antenna that I found on Amazon. This is made by many different suppliers, MLA30+. Plus. It receives medium wave and HF, okay? Rainproof, wing, active receive antenna, low noise, medium short wave. I've done a review on a different one of these before. Now this is sold by an outfit called Gutview-US, okay? So there are a lot of different people who sell this. I found this for $55 on Amazon. And here's what we have. We have Mega Loop, receive only MLA 30 plus active loop antenna. The way this works is there's a very small loop right here that springs out to about two feet in diameter. There's a length of coax that comes inside your house. And then in order to power the preamp in here, we need a little thing called a bias T, kind of an odd name for it, but here it is. Now this doesn't have any battery in it, so we're going to have to plug it in. This is a USB mini, not a USB type C. I would recommend to the manufacturers that they go ahead and either put a battery in there, put in a type C here, because type C is getting to be universal now. And if you lose your cable, they're very hard to find. So let's do this. Let's build this. Now this is a little weird because there's no supports for the antenna, no supports. So we're going to attach this directly. These are done with little tie wraps. So you've got to break this open without cutting the wire. And they've got this about as tight on here as they can get it. These things are made of spring steel. Now spring steel is not as good a conductor as copper. But they don't make spring copper, so, okay, there we go. Now, these are bent down, so they connect on either side of this. This is the little preamp. Note that there are no extra washers or anything here. It's just put on with this little wing nut. Okay, no washers, no lock washers or anything like that. Now this is to be stretched out all the way. And again, there's nothing keeping the thing up. I'm a little surprised. I got one of these once before and even reviewed it years ago when I did a video about shortwave listening, which oddly enough has turned out to be one of my very few viral videos. It had over 700,000 views. And it, it was about getting into shortwave listening. Anybody with a ham receiver these days, they all have a general coverage receivers in them. Okay, and there it is. It doesn't look really good, does it? Okay, we're going to get a piece of plastic pipe out of the garage and attach this to the plastic pipe, then put it up outside. This is a wooden pole, so in theory an insulator. And now we'll go down to where this is about a circle. And this, oddly enough, well, it does have a, a few mounting holes here. We could use something like that. And we'll take this outside. this up just like we did the last one and this go 
goes to the receiver. Now it turns out that our receiver, which is the SDR Play RSP Duo, has exactly the correct connectors. Okay. Now, we need to power this from external power. There's no battery inside. So something to remember if you're doing this, say, on a camping trip or something like that, you're going to need something that will provide 5-volt power. That can be a power pack or one of those big battery packs or something like that. I'll just plug this in here. It goes this way. There. And it's on. You even got a little, nice little light. There are no adjustments for sensitivity or anything. And what we're doing for our test of the effectiveness of this antenna is we're comparing this with my chameleon receive only antenna, which is way up high on the roof. Now, this down here is the test MLA 30 plus. They're on the same thing. All the settings are identical and we're using the same waterfall palette. Now, Right off the bat, it seems to me that this is a little stronger, but we're going to look at signal-to-noise ratio here, too. What we're going to do is take several screenshots, and then we compare it, because it's real hard to look at that and that at the same time. They're both bouncing around. In this first one right here, we've got minus 85.1 dBm, minus 64 dBm, that's 8 dB. Now notice these are negative numbers. This is actually the stronger signal. But that's not what's important. What's Because you can amplify anything. What's important is the signal to noise ratio. Here I'm getting 21.9 dB. Here I'm getting 20 dB, about 2 dB less, which is a third of an S unit. So about the same. Let's look at the next one here. We have minus 79 versus minus 74. So that's 5 dB stronger, but look at the signal to noise ratio is actually less. 27.8 dB to 22.1 dB, almost an S unit better signal to noise ratio, which is going to be the important thing for telling a signal apart from the background. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is minus 79.4, minus 70. Okay, we're like a dB and a half better signal strength. But 28 versus 26 is 2 dB, or a third of an S unit, better signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, so this next one, this is our fourth one, is 85.7 dBm to 74.3 dBm. That's like an S unit and a half stronger, but we get well, identical signal-to-noise ratios. Either one of these is fully satisfactory. Now we're on our last one here, 89.3 to 82.4. This, again, we're dealing with negative numbers, so this is the biggest one. Now on the signal-to-noise ratio, we're 3 dB off, more than 3 dB, and the chameleon wins on signal-to-noise ratio. Again, anybody can amplify, but what is going on here is the signal-to-noise ratio is better on the chameleon by about 3 dB all the way through. So, what did we learn from this? We learned that the MLA30 Plus is fully capable of receiving signals. Now, I will note that it's down a lot lower than where we have the chameleon, which is on the top of the roof. I had them both oriented in the same direction, which was east to west. Uh, there is a null, north to south, on both of them. But I have to give the chameleon about a 3 dB advantage on signal to noise ratio. Now that's not a huge amount, but for weak signals that could be important. Now we recently tested the Uzizu active antenna and it did about as well as the one up there. So if I had to choose between this one for $55 and the Gazizu for $60, I think I'd take the Gazizu. The Gazizu came with a mounting pole and brackets and all that sort of stuff, whereas this one did not. I didn't have a small piece of plastic pipe in the garage like I thought I might, but the Gazizu actually is a little more complete and has a better signal-to-noise ratio by just 3 dB. So you can go either way that you may want with this. If you have a shortwave receiver that's pretty deaf, 
doesn't hear very much, then this one, the MLA 30 plus would be a little better because it adds a little more signal strength. But otherwise, I think I'd go with the Guzi Zoo. Okay, so there you have it. Now there are multiple versions of the MLA 30 plus out there and you can pick the one that you like. They're all about the same price. Now note, because of the recent introduction of tariffs on trade from China, what they have already exported and is in the country, you can get for the old price, but anything newly coming into the country will be hit with the tariff. They'll figure that out at some point, but in the meantime, you take your best price off of Amazon, it'll give you what you're looking for. Now, this is a quarter. Do you think you can spare eight quarters over the space of a month? That's $2. If so, you can go to patreon.com slash ke0og and throw in two bucks a month. Hardly takes anything, just a few quarters in your pocket, and yet it will really help support this channel. This antenna that I bought, the one we just reviewed, I paid for out of channel funds. Okay, so it takes a fair number of those contributions, but there's 130,000 channel members. So if we can get that up a bit, I can get more interesting things to look at on the channel. If you do have a question that you'd like answered on this or in the pages of QST or a direct reply, send that to Kessler28, that's C-A-S-L-E-R 28 at gmail.com. And that'll come right to me. You can attach drawings, pictures, whatever you like to uh, help. Remember, context is always helpful. If you have an antenna, give me the model number. If you have a radio, give me the model number. You've got coax in between, give me an estimate of how many feet. If you've got a proper ground system with lightning arresters, tell me about that too, because that can be very important in reducing noise on antennas. Until we next meet, 73.